in domestic work. Um, and it could, again, be someone from the Bronx working child care for someone else from the Bronx, um, cleaning houses, domestic work, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Restaurants and food service. So who's blessing your table and who's doing the dishes? Um, and construction. You know, sometimes we don't think about these things, right. but even in hotels where that seems really official, a lot of a lot of the people that are working there um, might not be getting fair wages um, or treated well. So top industries for sex trafficking, and we went into that a lot, but hotels, motels, online ads, yeah. um, commercial fronted brothels, and that includes like happy ending massage places, which we see a lot in Brooklyn and Queens. Yeah. Um, and escort services. Um, so these are red flags, and I feel like we went over a lot of them. So a couple that I want to just flag are, are if they don't have access to their identity documents, right? So if someone else has their passport, or if someone else has their ID, you can't do a lot of things in the city um, or anywhere without having an ID, right? There are some buildings you can't go into. Um, so if someone doesn't have their documents, that's a huge red flag. Um, they work long hours with minimal or no breaks, and they're coached in what to say or how to communicate. So uh, my, my partner from the Department of Labor always gives this example that when she's interviewing potential victims, uh, she asks, how much do you make? Um, a woman in the nail salon, for example, and she responds, I make minimum wage. And then she asks, oh, okay, how much is that? And the woman just repeats, I make minimum wage. So she doesn't know what minimum wage is, but she's told, if anyone asks, that's what you say, right? Mm. So we gotta look out for yeah. scripted narratives and people not knowing what that means mm -hmm. together, right? And okay, well, what do we do to the We'll get, we'll get there. And then um, another thing is if the person lives and works on the same premises, that's a red flag. Um, another one is if, if there's frequent emergency room visits, uh, we see a lot of healthcare opportunities to intervene. Um, some people, their boss goes with them, right? And I don't care how nice my boss is, I don't know about your boss, but my boss wouldn't go with me to the doctor. You know, and sometimes they pretend to be their sister or their brother or things like that. But it's all about power and control, right? And it's all about surveillance. They're going where you're going. They're watching where you're going. And they're seeing who you talk to. They're seeing what kind of paper you're putting in your pockets. So also be careful about what you hand to, to a victim. Um, go ahead. Um, yeah, we're going to skip okay. that part. So now we're just going to talk about a little bit more about vulnerabilities. And to put it really simply, the things that make someone uh, vulnerable to human trafficking make people vulnerable in our society. Our society yes. is, uh, you know, a lot about power and control. Yeah. So, so poverty is the biggest one. If people had access to good jobs with good money, we wouldn't have to go side routes. Um, or, or people wouldn't have to try to look for different ways to make money, right? Um, so people also with a history of trauma, sexual assault, domestic violence, war, conflict, social discrimination by race, age, ability. We heard a mother talk about um, a special, special ed daughter. Um, we see that a lot. Um, sexual orientation, again, income. Um, people with a lack of support network or safety net. Foreign nationals, language, and immigration status. All those three. Why do you think those make people vulnerable? Afraid of being deported, isolation, can't talk to anybody. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, gangs. Black male. Or it's probably something like in a situation where. Oh, it's probably a situation where they're traumatized by something that happened and they don't want to say anything to right. anyone. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Very good. Definitely. Very good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, yeah, again, it, it's all about lack of resources and lack of support, right? So to go back to prevention, how can we be more active community members? How can we share resources, which is education, which is housing, which is love, right? And concern for people. Um, and, and be that person to say, like, that doesn't sound right. Or I know labor laws here, and you should get a day off. Or come talk to me if if you have threats, right? So let's keep going. This has anybody seen this power and control wheel before? No. You have? Where have you seen it? Cool. Yeah. They use it a lot in domestic violence, um, but this one was adapted for trafficking. Um, and I think it's, it's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of similarities between domestic violence and trafficking because it's all about power and control again, right? So I really like to have this visual, mostly for visual learners like me, like all this huge thick circle that's keeping people in a world of isolation, in a world of exploitation and abuse. It's hard to break out of that it's hard to think that there's hope outside of that. Like we heard the survivor say, um, she didn't have anyone on the outside. She was friends with other people that were working, right? So it's hard to remember that there's another life available, right? And that you can get treated with respect um, when, you're, when you're not used to that in the moment. So remember this, and then we're gonna skip forward one, two slides. Oh, no. It's disappeared. Well, there's one more slide about uh, trauma-informed care, and it, I think that I think that that is uh, illuminates like our responsibility as people intervening, as community members, to respond with transparency, safety, um, giving information, sharing resources, and really giving the person the opportunity to take power and control back of themselves, right? So it's not me saying I'm an expert in sex in sex or labor trafficking, like come with me um, and, and you need to do this and this. Like it's laying out all the, the options that this person has and, and laying out the help that you can provide and letting, and letting them decide which route they want, right? Because there's so many different routes which we're gonna talk about now. Um, so there are service providers. I work at, I'm the manager of training and community outreach at the anti-trafficking program with Safe Horizon. Safe Horizon is a huge organization. It's our largest um, victim service agency in the country and it, it only serves the five boroughs, so we're big. Um, but our program is really small. But we do counseling, case managing, and basic emotional needs, right? Because there's a world of exploitation, so we need to meet uh, survivors with a world of support, right? Um, there's healthcare providers, so so people need healthcare. Go to an emergency room, hopefully one with a social worker on staff um, who knows how to handle this. There's also civil law enforcement. So if someone wants just to file for back wages, say that they've been working in construction for three years, they were told they were gonna be able to make, spend, uh, sorry, send money home to their family, but instead um, rent keeps getting taken out of their paycheck, food keeps getting ta taken out of their paycheck, and they're, they're only making $50 a day for working 12 hours a day. Um, if that person wants to file for back wages but doesn't care about seeing that person in jail, they just want their money for the past three years, they can go directly to the Department of Labor and, and work on that. So that's civil law enforcement, right? Um, they can also file a civil suit against the trafficker. Or if someone wants criminal law enforcement, so they want that person in jail, they can go to the NYPD or, or any of the DA's offices. I work really closely with the Brooklyn DA's office. Because I'm in Brooklyn. But you have one. Um, so just to wrap up, 
in these last couple slides, I just want to leave you with a couple things about how to help survivors um, or people that are still in this situation, which might be called victim. Um, take cues from them. So a lot of people, uh, again, are under heavy surveillance, power, and control, and it's not always safe to intervene. So take cues from them, right? Um, they, they a lot of times know if it's, if it's safe for them to do anything. Um, listen and validate, normalize their feelings. Communicate messages of hope, like you have rights. You are not alone and not to blame. You are entitled to services and help regardless of your immigration status in this country. Um, and then again, discreetly, watch out. I would... Uh, think about giving someone, like even my card or something, I have some resources there on the back table, but think about what you're giving to someone because um, if they're still in a trafficking situation, chances are that, that their purse is going to get searched, their clothes are going to get searched, and that, that could put someone in more danger. Um, and make referrals. So there's a hotline that I have it right here, but it's also printed out um, on a sheet back there. And connect people to social workers. Um, our services are, again, social services, intensive case managers. We have three that speak multiple languages. We also have two lawyers on staff that, that are there to specifically work with folks who are not born in this country, who are seeking immigration remedies. There is immigration, there are visas for people that are legally victims of trafficking. Um, if, they, if they come and get services, then they can apply to get legal citizenship here, which is really important, the immigration remedy. Um, okay, great. And then the final takeaways, I just want you to remember that regardless, again, of immigration status, especially in this newest administration, um, again, being an active community member, we have to be informed and protect each other, right? Um, we have to know that, that regardless of services, like some, or regardless of status, everyone's entitled to services. Um, so please remember that. Even if a case is not criminally charged with survivor trafficking, it's severe trauma, like we heard this woman say, like Reverend Q has said, um, and please connect them to trauma-informed services. It's not something Sorry. to mess around with. Like, Sorry. go come to Safe Horizon Anti-Trafficking or another program. And if you're concerned about someone, again, there's a National Human Trafficking Resource Center hotline. Um, and there's a little bit of my information. I have a business card back there, um, but, but thank you so much for doing this, and, and remember to be active community members. If we're all looking out for each other, there's really nothing we can't do, you know? Thank you so much, Noelle. We're going to do Q&A, but the, the posters that are being placed on the middle of your desk, on the middle of your table, youth, is you're about to do a project, and we're going to have Q&A for both um, Noel and myself. Um, and does everybody got a poster in the middle of their table? Poster. Poster? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't see that anymore now. James, can you help them with the posters and making sure? Very tight. Very tight. Okay, just wanted to share this with you. Um, I, so when my daughter went missing about day five, I get a call from another parent in the neighborhood who says, your daughter was spotted just in the neighborhood. And so the young girl gets on the phone and she says, Miss Kilker, do you know where your daughter is? I said, no, I haven't seen her in five days, but we're actually looking for her right now. She said, well, I just saw her with an older man. She didn't have a phone on. And I said, wait a minute, and I ran and got a piece of paper and a pen. My mom always said, write down everything because you'll forget it in 15 minutes. And um, I wrote down what she had on. She didn't have on the clothes that she had on when she left my house. I wrote down what he had on. And some kind of crazy way, my daughter gave her best friend the phone number to the, one of the sex traffickers and said, 
um, you know, can we use, can, can he come into your apartment to charge the phone? Later, Ken tells me they were recruiting her. See, see how quick it just, it just happened so fast. And this is outside of the corner. But I'm just saying this to say that we have to look out for all of we our do, kids, right? We, do, we, do. we have to parent okay, on the phone, call the parent. This is a, a friend from the third grade. We hadn't even seen her in about five or six years. But she knew enough to know that she didn't have on a comb and it was about 40 degrees and she just didn't look like herself. That information is what we actually use to find her. Wow. And she said, Mommy, I was five blocks away from the house and I still couldn't get home. Wow. So, you know, just wanted to let you know wow. that it just came to me as I'm telling the story actually for the first time since all of this has happened. Wow. And that's what, that's what we're talking about as far as the village raising its children. How many of you believe that the village can once again raise its children and that we can restore neighbor back in the hood? That's what we're talking about, looking out for one another. See something, say something. If it look unusual, it is our responsibility. It's not the other person's. Okay, questions at this time. So everyone's got a poster. Next week is our My Freedom Day. So we're going to be back here Tuesday. We're going to launch with the youth of the press conference. And um, we're going to be doing some very, very neat stuff. Um, definitely would love to have you come back. But you're going to write down um, on these posters. Everybody's got the posters. Everybody got a marker. And let's have one of the tables. Do we have extra posters left? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's give it to one of the adult tables. I want this table to tackle this poster. Yeah, we have some posters here. Okay. And I want some adults to tackle the poster, okay? The first thing you're going to do on the top of the poster is you're going to put... So, okay, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, Let's give it up for our NYPD. Yes. Um, I, we did have a question, NYPD, right before you leave, NYPD. One of my youth had a question of you. Shantae, did she leave? Shantae, do you want to ask him your question? Okay, she's going to ask you your question on the way out. Thank you. So to be sensitive to that. Okay, so on the top of it, you're going to write down, um, not on my watch, whoever has the